Ruth Ahrens was born with show business in her blood, and she remains the United States' only singles table tennis world champion. But who was Ruth Ahrens? Ruth Ahrens was born in New York in 1918 to a family in the business. Her father, Alfred Ahrens, was a New York Broadway theatrical producer and theatre owner. Ruth's mother, Layla, had been an actress and light opera singer in her own right. And Ruth's older half-brother, Alex Ahrens, would go on to become an incredibly successful theatre producer as well. Some of Alex Ahrens' hit musicals include Lady Be Good, Funny Face and Girl Crazy, which he co-created with his production partner, Vinton Friedley. The pair often drew upon the talent of George and Ira Gershwin for the music and lyrics, and Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers were regular features in their productions. It was in this world that the young Ruth Ahrens was formed. Parties at the Ahrens household were attended by the biggest New York Broadway stars of the time. As a little girl, Ruth sat under the piano at parties at which the likes of George Gershwin and Cole Porter entertained. Show business would eventually call her, but not before she became a star of international table tennis. Ruth first encountered table tennis at around the age of 14, when her tennis practice was interrupted by a rainstorm, and she became immediately hooked with the sport. Within months of picking up a paddle for the first time, she was winning tournaments, and she became US national champion in 1934. You could interpret this as being the result of low-quality opposition, but her subsequent success would also suggest an incredible natural talent. Her first national title was achieved using a penhold grip, which she corrected after the tournament, an apparently easy transition for Ahrens, as she would also win the US national championships the following year in 1935. This would earn her selection to represent the USA at the 1936 World Table Tennis Championships held in Prague, Czechoslovakia. Accompanied by her grandmother, Ruth Ahrens set sail for Europe. After stopping in London for some practice matches, Ahrens, her grandmother and teammate Jay Purves arrived in Prague. As they had done in London, the young American players turned a few heads with their fashion choices. Ruth said that everywhere they went in Europe, they had a crowd gazing at her outfits in amazement. Ruth Ahrens had a big interest in fashion, and this was no doubt influenced by the glamorous crowd that she grew up around. Women's fashion in Europe was somewhat more conservative. The women's table tennis players of the time would often play in full-length dresses. This was in contrast to the stylish slacks worn by Ruth Ahrens. Ruth Ahrens' playing style was also attractive. She played an attacking style with lots of topspin drives, and this was in an era, particularly in the women's game, where slow, defensive play was everywhere, and where the aim was simply to keep the ball on the table and force an error from the opponent. This was the style of play which Ahrens hated, and she described it as disgusting. But it was an effective tactic. At the same 1936 World Championships, on the men's side, one point in a match between Aloji Ehrlich and Panis Farkas took over two hours. The Prague crowd hated Chislers as much as Ruth Ahrens, and most had left the arena before the point was even finished. As a result of such tedium, the ITTF stepped in with rule changes to lower the height of the net by three quarters of an inch and limit the length of matches. It would be this second rule that would play a major impact on Ruth Aaron's second world championship. But back to the Prague championships. After a silver medal finish in the team event for the USA women's team, it was now time for the singles. At her first world championships, Ruth Ahrens made the women's final. In the semi-final, she narrowly defeated the 1934 and 1935 world champion Marie Ketnarova. Marie Ketnarova was from Czechoslovakia, and Ruth's victory was in front of a highly partisan home crowd. Ahrens described how table tennis in Czechoslovakia was like a national sport, and the crowd in Prague could be particularly raucous at times. In the final, Ruth Ahrens came up against the German, Astrid Krebsbach. It was an easy victory for Ahrens, and Ruth Ahrens was now world champion at just 17 years old. 
There was perhaps an emotional edge to the match too. Kremsbach was competing under the Nazi flag and Ahrens was Jewish. Ruth Ahrens refused to shake her opponent's hand, proclaiming, I am Jewish. Table tennis might not have been as popular in the United States as it was in Europe, but Ruth Ahrens victory hadn't gone unnoticed. There were headlines written. And keen to capitalise on the profile she had built in becoming world champion, a table tennis act or stage show was developed in conjunction with her brother, Alex Ahrens. Her style, grace, good looks and connections meant that the show was a success. Playing upper-class supper clubs of New York, audience members could include famous people like Ginger Rogers or John D. Rockefeller Jr. 1937 came around and it was time for Ruth Ahrens to travel to Baden in Austria to defend her world title. First up though would be the team events and in a historic high for USA table tennis, both the men's and women's teams would emerge as world champions. In the women's singles, once again, Ruth Ahrens would reach the final. In the final, she came up against the Austrian notorious chiseler Trude Pritzi. This would be a highly controversial final. Ruth Ahrens tried to play her usual attacking positive style of game, but Trude Pritzi somehow dragged Ahrens into a pushing match. The rallies were long and the match lingered on into a third end. But the clock was ticking. The previous year, the ITTF had introduced a one hour, 45 minutes, five game time limit. And when the time limit was reached, the match was declared a draw. But instead of declaring that the players were joint champions, they were both awarded second place the World Championship title was left vacant. There have been numerous interpretations of this outcome and the US Table Tennis Association very much backed their woman. Carl Seisberg, their president, had this scathing assessment. Instead of being penalised in this instance, Miss Ahrens deserves the thanks of the ITTF for preventing the capture of the world title by a player who never hits the ball. We will continue to publicise Miss Ahrens as the undefeated world champion. In time, the time limit rule would be amended. After all, a player knowing they were inferior to their opponent could simply just play for time to avoid defeat. And it's interesting, at the same tournament, the time limit rule wasn't enforced consistently. The men's final between Aloji Ehrlich and Richard Bergman exceeded the time, but they were allowed to continue. This has led to claims of potential bias in the decision to end the match. After all, these were Austrian officials umpiring a game in which one of their own, Trudy Pritzi, was playing. There have also been claims of potential anti-Semitism playing a role. This was an Austria just one year before it was annexed by Nazi Germany. Thanks to the campaigning of US table tennis officials Steve Isaacson and Tim Boggan, in 2001, the ITTF changed the result of the 1937 women's final to declare that both Ruth Ahrens and Trudy Pritzi would be joint world champions for that year. Unfortunately, Ruth Ahrens wouldn't live long enough to discover that she was now officially a two-time world champion. The 1937 world championships were Ruth Ahrens' last. She would only play a year or so more of competitive table tennis. She declared that she'd won everything she wanted, four American national championships and two world titles. Now, show business was calling. Ruth Ahrens continued with her table tennis performances, touring extensively with former Hungarian world champions Sandor Glanch and Viktor Barna. It was even rumoured in the press that she was engaged to Viktor Barna, although this wasn't true, and Ruth Ahrens never did get engaged or married. She toured right through the 1940s, including during the Second World War, where she entertained US troops stationed abroad. The shows kept up her fame, and I just have to read this quite ridiculous quote from 1942 in Collier's magazine. Miss Ahrens is not only the greatest table tennis player in the world, she is also beautiful and streamlined. She possesses all the glamour of a besweated Hollywood starlet. In a game which features lanky, wizened males and chunky, horse-faced females, she stands out like Betty Grable in a home for aged spinsters. It was clearly a different time. Ruth Ahrens would eventually go on to become an incredibly successful 
Hollywood showbiz manager. Some of her clients included Shirley Jones, Jack Cassidy and George Shakiris. Perhaps the most famous of her clients was the teen heartthrob David Cassidy. Ruth Ahrens and David Cassidy would build a strong friendship and business partnership. David Cassidy writes glowingly of Ruth Ahrens in his autobiography. He describes her as sophisticated, wise and vibrant and also one of the most important people in his life. Ruth Ahrens died in 1980 at the age of 61, apparently following a fall where she hit her head in the shower. The fall may have been contributed to by an addiction to sleep medication that she had. David Cassidy describes how Ruth was often unable to get out of bed or even stand as a result of the drug use. A sad end to a great life and a great of table tennis. Ruth Ahrens remains the United States' only singles table tennis world champion.